being the first one to get started and that was a perfect one to Terrence Edwards from Max Hall on that corner out. Now we'll see if Mike Riley has an answer. Mike Riley's trying to get things started. Three receivers wide side, right? Riley looking that way and into the hands of Fred Stamps, who has a catch at the 40 for five yards. Leading receiver in the league with his 45th catch. Also leads in a couple of other categories, and these short routes are simply to set the defensive back. In this case, Alex Suber up for a deep route later. He has 10 catches over 30 yards, which leads the Canadian Football League as well. They'd like to get him down the field. They give him the 41, so it's a gain of six, second and four. They empty it out, flags fly, a free play perhaps, and a nice catch there by McCarty. Pulled down quickly. Short of the first down by Suber, but again, looks like the Bombers were offside. Offside, Winnipeg, number 90. Five yard penalty, first down, Edmonton. It's former Eskimo, Greg Peach. It negates the short play by McCarty, but was a pretty nice catch. It really was. I want to go back and show it again because Calvin McCarty looks like a sure handed wideout, not a fullback. Go back the opposite direction, comes up with that catch. And McCarty will line up. Well, now he'll come back into the backfield. Looked like he was going to line up as a slot. They pitch it out. Here's the speedy Miles. Gets to the edge. And then gets taken down by the new safety, Javon Johnson. Tim Burke talked about a safety needing range and needing to be a big hitter. And we saw the combination of the two there. Yeah, it's funny because his head coach said, I know he's got range. I know he can play with the experience in the Canadian Football League understands the position and the angles. My question is, can he be a hitter? Can he come up and make the big hit on a receiver or running back? And he showed you, yeah. And by the way, when Javon Johnson was asked the same question, he said, come on, that's no problem, I can hit. Did Miles six, second and four. And that's McCarty off the left side, breaks a tackle. And then they rally to the football and bring him down short of the first down. Disha Dunn is going to get the angle. He's going to force this play and allow his teammates a chance to catch up. First thing you got to do is try and corral it so your teammates can flow to the football. Watch 23 to the right of your screen. He's going to step out wide. That tries to corral the run. Get him slowed down a little bit and allow the teammates to get there. Now a fake Grant Shaw on third and a couple. And now you'll put it. He was in trouble, wouldn't have got to the first down. And there'll be a 15-yard, no yards. Corbin Sharoon was trapped there. And Javon Johnson alertly came up to play the football and get that 15-yard penalty. So just a 22-yard punt as the Bombers get the ball back with the lead, momentum, and good field position. Watch your favorite heroes save the world in Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., a new series Tuesday at 8, 7 Central on CTV. Offensive line at the Eskimo bench going over things with Chris Sweet as they haven't been able to move the football consistently in this first half. Max Hall and the blue and gold have. Net of nine after the penalty and the short punt by Grant Shaw and there's Aaron Kelly, another catch. Joe Burnett will bring him down at the 48 and the flag comes down. Fourteen more for Aaron Kelly. Major foul, face mask. Edmonton, 15 yards and into the play, automatic first down. Max Hall, the timing right on the curl. To Aaron Kelly, who's going to get four, the 15 yards tacked on. 
for the face mask penalty at the end of the play. Let's take a look. Tomaso Munoz. Fourth face mask penalty against Edmonton this season. And the Bombers back in scoring range again. A throw for Kohler who was not out of his break when the ball sailed by him. T.J. Hill was in tight coverage. And Kohler broke out when I think Max Hall thought he was going to continue on down the field on the go route. That's just communication error, it was, which is a little surprising in the fact that they had such good chemistry on their touchdown drive early on, but you could see Kohler just broke out. Max Hall thought he was going to run the straight go route. Second and ten, and the Eskimos have a package with Curran along with Shirt and Munoz. All the linebackers and Rene Curran just ran over Terrence Edwards, but Edwards hangs on as it gets to the 25. Yeah, you know, he hung on to this, but he also got some help from his quarterback because Max Hall throws it to where it's not going to be just a suicide shot over the middle. It's a big hit, but the throw is nice and low so that Terrence Edwards can brace himself for impact from Rennie Curran coming inside out. Watch it nice and low in there. Mm -hmm. He can brace himself, crouch down, and take that hit, absorb it. If he has to go up or extend for it, it becomes a big hit. Now the question was that helmet to helmet contact. No flags. DeAngelis from 32 yards out looking for his second of the game. And he puts that leg down the middle. Well, let's take another look at the hit that we're sure the league will take another look at as the Bombers add to their lead. Eskimos need to get their big play man into this game. He's closing in on 7,000 yards, closing in on Jason Tucker with more. Here again is Sarah. Well, Chris, I spoke to Fred Stamps about that today just before they took to the field, and he laughed. He said he had no idea that he was so close to Jason Tucker in terms of overall yardage as an Eskimo. He said that he doesn't keep track of stuff like that. He's a very mild-mannered, soft-spoken man. He doesn't like to talk about himself too much. He did say that each year his focus is just to get better, doesn't pay attention to the yardage. The number one goal, though, obviously remains to get a great cup. Nice little shovel pass inside to Calvin McCarty in a first down run up at the 50. When he does get by Jason Tucker, I hope it's on a corner route. <laughs> Wouldn't that be perfect? And hey, hey, Fred Stamps can run that corner route pretty well. I don't know if there's many as good as Jason Tucker when it came to that route. And Ricky Ray to Tucker was one that I know, partner, you called many, many times. But for Fred Stamps leading the league on a team that's struggled this year, saying something. Playing in his 99th game, McRiley looking to the sideline, and Kuhorn couldn't hang on. Demond Washington on the scene for the Bombers. Fought that off a little bit. Just four catches for Kuhorn in the last three weeks. Yeah, a couple last week, maybe getting into his head a little bit through the mid part of July and into August. Playing very well, in fact, was on pace for a career best season. Spotted a little bit. Eskimos having trouble stringing first downs together. Looking at it, second and ten. Rolling right. Here comes the heat from Mwamba. Open is Bowman, and he's got it. First down. But Darius Bowman will be marked out at around the 42 yard line. Well, and Mike Riley had to throw this, falling away from Henock Mwamba, who shot through the gap when he got outside of containment and just kind of fell away. Letting this go as Mwamba is going to put the hit on him. Bowman's gone up and pulled a few down. Here's Mwamba shooting through to hurry the throw. But Riley has been in that position to see a few receptions this year, completions this year. Back inside, Hugh Charles, big hole down to the 30. Another Eskimo first down, and now they're getting a little traction on offense. 11 for Hugh Charles. Well executed ride and decided. Just, let's just show you how when this is drawn up and run like to perfection here. Watch Riley hold it in the stomach, wait for the hold to develop, 
then he gives when he recognizes that the defensive end, Kenny Maynard, had gone high on contain, executed perfectly on the ride and the side, as Mark Tressman used to call it. Double tight end formation. First and ten, Charles stays in the block, picked up Kenny Maynard. Riley, the throw, Fred Stamps got it inside the five. Great catch by Stamps as Riley delivers. Almost impossible to cover Fred Stamps if there's going to be that much time, and he's allowed to go from the wide side of the field on a post pattern all the way across to the opposite sideline. And if Fred Stamps can line up here and then take it all the way across, I don't care who you are, you cannot cover for that long drop to safety Javon Johnson. He caught that outside the numbers for a 27-yard gain that came from the opposite side. Riley had all kinds of time to get that one out there. 27 yards to Stamps. It's first and goal. Fake to McCarty. And the throw almost intercepted oh, by Washington. <laughs> Tamar Washington, he saw a touchdown. He, he saw, he was planning his touchdown dance, jumped the route, and did everything but catch it. I mean, the only guy that has a shot is Riley, and there's nothing but... Just sits on the rope. He's just going to sit on it. Come underneath it. <laughs> he had a touchdown. Second and goal from the three. Riley running out of time. And he'll get tossed down. Kenny Meter gets home and has his sixth sack of the year. His second against the Eskimos. I think Mike Riley won it to go to the back of the end zone. Maynard finally gets there, coming around the end on Matt O'Donnell. I think it was Marcus Henry that Mike Riley was looking for at the back of the end zone, well covered by Alex Suber. So Hugh O'Neill comes on from 22 yards out. And he'll kick the Eskimos onto the scoreboard here, but they... Settle for three as the Bombers defense comes up with a stand. Back to that sack again. Kenny Maynard gets the sack, but I think it, the hesitation from Mike Riley caused by safety Javon Johnson just by position, holding the middle, holding the middle, occupying the vision of the quarterback and getting underneath that route over the top from Marcus Henry. That gave Maynard just enough time to get there. So the Bombers will start at the 35 after the field goal and Will Ford taken down quickly by Almondo Sewell. Big defensive tackle. Making some noise this year as well. Sewell with five sacks. That matches Odell Willis. Same number as Marcus Howard coming in. And you're focused in on those matchups with the two tackles, and meanwhile, Sewell's starting to get some pressure. Until tonight, that defense much better. They've given up 30 points or more in six straight until the last two. 29 points combined allowed in the last two games, but 20 here so far tonight, and that pass incomplete. Intended for Edwards had Kelly streaking down the sidelines, too. Tight window and Max Hall didn't have much time this time. He had to get it out there. And when you take a look at the matchup, Dan Knapp, that right tackle against Odell Willis. Been hanging in there so far, but Willis or Willis used some speed coming around the edge and just and out round the corner and rushed Max Hall a little bit. So it's the second two and out for the Bombers tonight. And Miles awaits at the Edmonton 30-yard line. I'll tell you what, more than a passing grade as far as I'm concerned for both tackles for the Bombers. Absolutely. In this first half. And some personnel issues. Rennie Stefan has to come on. And time count violation. Bombers take a time Winnipeg, count. Number nine, five-yard penalty remains third down.
So it's marched back five yards, and Renault gets set to send it to Miles. Short kick. Bouncing at the 42, the no yards penalty. Mwamba with the tackle. It'll be the five yard variety. And Mike Riley back to work. Good field position against Casey Crehan's defense. As the Eskimos try to get back in this. No yards. Winnipeg number 43. Five yard penalty. First down. Crehan's defense been able to contain Fred Stamps for the most part in this game so far. For that deep crosser, but this is a guy who leads the league in touchdown receptions. Got nine of them. Which matches his personal best. One more for a new high. Got First him. down, and the pass is to Shamad Chambers with the catch. Down at the 49-yard line of the Bombers, Marty Marquette the tackle, but Shamad Chambers' first catch moves it into Winnipeg territory. A difference uh, a little personnel change can make. There is Fred Stamps. I want to show you the difference with the safety, Javon Johnson being over the top and in position to help on this play. Fred Stamps looked like he is wide open, and he is, but he's got safety help coming, and that's why Riley goes away from it. the 49 of the Bombers. Hand off inside and Enoch Mwamba with another tackle came into the game third in the tackle department with 65. You know, this is a guy in the last three games, he got 17 tackles and five special teams tackles among the, the league and te his team leader in special teams tackles. There he is in defensive tackles and among the leaders there. A guy that, you know, when you're still covering kicks and making all the tackles, then amongst the leaders as a middle linebacker, that's a heck of a season. Second and long once again. Riley, open man, first down. Marcus Henry down inside the 30-yard line. Marcus Henry. Marcus Henry has got run this curl route he pushes on to the to the like he's gonna run the corner and then just turns it up Alex Huber tries to hustle to get high and he just curls it up quickly catch of 19 yards for Henry who had just one for seven yards at Commonwealth last Saturday just over three minutes to go Riley a shot, looking for Stamps and missed him by a stride or two. Matched up against him on Washington. What a great decision by Henoch Mwamba. Number one, he gets in the throwing line. He's going to disrupt the accuracy.